The Personality of Demons Mark 1, 38 and 39, King James Version And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore I came forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. Two of the most avoided topics are the topic of demons and the topic of hell. Rarely do churches preach about these subjects, yet Jesus, our Lord and Savior, spoke about these topics. The teachings about demons is not what a lot of church members like to hear about in the church today. The truth is that we cannot run from this as Christians. We need to know about these spirits and how they work because they are part of what we have to deal with. Demons are part of what Jesus dealt with on a regular basis. When Jesus was telling his disciples to go out and preach, he told them they must cast out demons. It is an important thing to do. You have to cast out demons and that is because of the personality they have. Demons know what they want. They know where they want to be. They act the way they want to act. There are different beliefs about demons depending on the society or religion, but one thing we must know is that demons are not good. Demons are spirits we must continue to fight because of what they are. In general, there are different classes of demons. These classifications are based on what they do for or to humans and where they can be found. Generally, all demons do nothing but evil. The Bible says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but dark powers. It means we are wrestling against demons. The Bible mentioned that one must be alert at all times. 1 Peter 5.8 King James Version Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. This is for us to understand that we must be conscious of demons and any appearance of them around us. Jesus was conscious of these evil spirits, and he knew they could possess people and even influence people's thinking. Jesus was aware of this, and you must also be aware of this. When Jesus was talking to his disciples about his death, his mission in the world to save people. While he was speaking, Peter interrupted. Matthew 16, 22, King James Version. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Jesus knew that wasn't Peter talking. We know that there could be war in the mind. The dark forces might want to take charge of the mind, even though they don't know what we are thinking. They try to put their ideas into our minds. The Bible says in James 4, 7b, King James Version, that resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus resisted him immediately by saying in Matthew 16, 23, King James Version, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. After Jesus resisted the devil, he stopped talking. Now let us pause for a moment. In your life, have you gotten to the level of maturity for you to be able to distinguish when someone's advice is actually that person's advice, or if they are being influenced by the enemy? Just like God can speak to you through other people, the devil can also speak to you through people. So to help us get to this stage of maturity, let us learn about what are the major personalities of demons. What is their character? 1. They are evil. We don't need anyone to tell us about this. Demons are evil. They are agents of Satan and they report to Satan. They don't care who you are. They don't care how good you are to people. What they will always plan for you is evil. They can inflict pain on someone. Do not let anyone deceive you about them. Don't let anyone make you think there are good demons. Good demons don't exist. 
When they give you something, they collect more than they gave you. You cannot have a deal with them and escape. I remember the first time I read about the spirit realm, it really shocked me. Because prior to becoming a born-again child of God, I did not believe in the supernatural. I didn't believe there was a devil. I didn't believe there were things called demons or evil spirits. I didn't believe in it. But the more and more I read the Bible, the more it became clear to me that there is indeed a spirit realm. And that spirit realm sometimes spills over into our world. The moment I realized and believed that there is indeed a spirit world was the moment my whole life changed. My whole perspective changed. Everything that I once believed was challenged when I realized that the spirit realm was real. A Bible believer has to believe in the supernatural. They have to, because this book is a supernatural book. The Bible is a supernatural book. And what a believer needs to know is that not all supernatural things are good. The devil and his demons can produce supernatural events and occurrences. We see that the Antichrist will come in the last days, producing lying wonders. This is why the Bible instructs to test the spirit. Test the spirit. Demonic activity did not end in the time of Matthew, Luke and John, but in our society we tend to brush things like this under the carpet. But you know who didn't? Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't avoid demons and demonology. Wherever Jesus went, a confrontation would happen, and the demons there would leave. I recently read an article which was talking about demon possession and about how it is on the rise. We commonly think that demon possession ended in the time of Jesus, but there is nowhere in the Bible that tells us this fact. This article went on to detailing an event of a woman who was levitating above her bed for over three hours. Levitating above her bed. Put that in perspective. Any time her family member would try to enter the room, the door would slam shut. They could only see what was happening through the keyhole of the room, but for three hours that lady was under demonic influence. As children of God, we are not to live in fear. Our God is greater than any demon of hell. At the name of Jesus Christ, every demon trembles. At the name of Jesus, every chain is broken. At the name of Jesus, the captives are set free. At the name of Jesus, there is no demon of hell that can withstand his name. Philippians 2 verse 9 and 10 Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Every knee shall bow, every knee. Ephesians 6 verse 12 and 13 For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We are to stand. The same Bible that teaches us there is a God in heaven is the same Bible that tells us that there is a real devil. The same Bible that tells there are holy angels is the same Bible that tells us there are evil spirits. Will you stand? It is time you take a stand in the name of Jesus Christ. You have authority over every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus. 
there are so many, so many demonic encounters that have happened to so many people that have ended simply at the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. There is hope in that name. There is strength and healing in that name. There is no other name whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. Be true to yourself. Demons are out there to kill, steal, and destroy. They must fulfill all of these because it is their duty. 2. They are imposters. Demons impersonate. They appear like an angel. They show up to you like they want to save you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11.14 New International Version, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Many people have been lured into sin because of these demons appearing like an angel. They have to operate this way because no one will accept them seeing them in their original form. Do not be deceived by these demons. Don't allow them to make you fall. You need the Holy Spirit to identify them. You need the Spirit of God to be able to deal with them. 1 John 4, 1, New International Version Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 3. They have a will and can decide what to do and what not to do. Just like humans, demons have a will and they decide. They can decide to help people and they can decide to destroy people. When Jesus was talking about demons leaving a body, he mentioned that they have wills. Matthew 12, 44, New International Version. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. 4. They possess people. This is the common thing that we all know. When they possess people, they show a new set of characteristics entirely. They start to do some extraordinary things that human beings cannot do. Possessed people act violently. This is one of the noticeable signs of possession. There is a constant violent act and disturbance from the possessed. Sometimes the demon tries to get the victim to destroy himself or herself. An example of this is the boy in the Bible that was possessed from birth. Mark 9, 20 and 22, King James Version. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tears him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And of times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us.